today. I'm going to talk with you about three young adult books. The first one is All American Boys, which is a fictional novel by two authors, one black and one white, that tells different perspectives of the same tragic incident. This book feels like it's been ripped from today's headlines with the rash of police brutality incidents on black American males and the Black Lives Matter movement. Rashad, a black teen stops off at a convenience store to buy a bag of chips. He is wrongly suspected of shoplifting and assaulting a white woman. He's brutally beaten by Paul, a white police officer. The incident is witnessed by Quinn, who is a white teen. He's a classmate of Rashad's and he's been raised by Paul. Quinn says, Holy shit, Paul. Paul was hitting the other guy again and again, smashing his face into the sidewalk. The blood kept coming. I wanted to move. My gut wanted me to rush to help Paul, but I knew enough to know that if you stayed out of police business. Plus, Paul didn't look like he needed any help because he was pummeling the guy. So I just stood there, sort of frozen, just watching, transfixed, with one knee and a forearm pinning the guy beneath him. Paul bent low and said something into the guy's ear. I couldn't look away. I didn't even want to. I didn't know what the hell was going on, but my own pulse jackhammered through me. The altercation is recorded on a cell phone and the community is divided. But some, some support Rashad and the others support Paul and his family. And Quinn has a big decision to make. Will he stand up for what he believes is right? Or will he be loyal to Paul? Read All American Boys to find out what Quinn does. The next book I wanted to share with you is entitled Child Soldiers, When Boys and Girls Are Used in War. Imagine you were kidnapped and I'm sorry, imagine you were kidnapped. What would you do to get back to your family? Child Soldier is a memoir of Michelle Chiquinini's experiences. Michelle is like many other five-year-old boys. He has a loving family. He spends his days going to school and playing soccer. But in 1993, the Democratic Republic of Congo, where Michelle and his family live, it's a country in turmoil. One afternoon, Michelle is playing soccer with his friends after school when a band of rebels kidnapped them and forced them to become child soldiers. The same soldier pulled me forward, turning me toward all the other children. Kevin was scared for me. I could see it in his eyes. Put out your hands. The rebel soldier blindfolded me and shouted. His Swahili was different from the kind I spoke, but I still understood it. Would I be whipped? I braced myself and held my hands out. Everything was swirling in my brain, and my legs were shaking so hard I thought my knees would buckle. Something heavy was dropped into my arms, but it fell to the ground with a thump. The rebel soldier put it right in my hands. It was a gun. Someone else was behind me, and he grabbed my fingers, pulling the, sh the trigger. Shoot! Shoot! Your family will never take you back now. We are your only family. They took off my blindfold. My hands were shaking hard. Kevin was lying in front of me in a pool of blood. I had been forced to kill my best friend. This graphic novel chronicles Michelle's experiences escaping this ordeal and ending up in a refugee camp with his family as they escape a war that affected so many. How does Michelle recover after his trauma? You're going to have to read Child Soldier to find out. My third book is called And We Stay. And this is a fictional novel that tells the story of Emily Bean. Emily's boyfriend, Paul Wagner, leads her through the book stacks of their high school library so they can talk privately. Paul gets really upset, and he pulls out a gun. Emily survives, and Paul does not. How do you think Emily's going to recover from this kind of traumatic experience? Emily transfers to Elmhurst School for Girls. It's the same school that Emily Dickinson attended, and it's in the same community that Emily Dickinson lived in. Emily Bean writes poetry and uses it as a way to process and understand the traumatic experience that she's been through. Similar to how Dickinson wrote poetry to explore and make sense of her world. And we stay, handle some emotional topics that are really relevant today. So if you like books that deal with tragedy and romance, you may want to check out And We Stay. Thank you for coming to my book talk.